Hello everyone, welcome back once again. Recently, one of my YouTube friends wants to know uh, what is the principle of propagation. And when I saw this request, uh, I realized that this is mostly an activity from the SAP basis person. And unfortunately, I'm not a basis guy. So I never ever implemented principle propagation for any of my customer before. But I took this as an opportunity because I have my own SAP system installed, which is running on Docker container and where I have the, all the privileges. So I thought, let's implement principal propagation in my own system, explore a bit to understand how things work. And it pays off for me. Actually, I learned a lot of good new things, how it works behind the scene. And hence, I just created this video for you. So if you are a BTP administrator or BTP developer, I'm pretty sure you've heard about this principal propagation. Maybe you never ever you know, got an opportunity to implement it. But if you want to know how things work, watch this video end to end. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll get something good out of this video. So without further ado, let's begin. So before we deep dive into the configuration part, let's quickly understand what's the principal propagation all about. So let's say that we have deployed one application to BTP site and the user needs to authenticate uh, with their BTP credentials or it can be single sign-on for them. And after they can authenticate, they will be able to access this application. Now, let's say this application wants to access also certain data from backend SAP on-prem system. And I'm pretty sure you are aware of that there is one more software that is needed called SAP Cloud Connector that actually integrates this two environment. Now, this BTP application cannot directly access this Cloud Connector because Cloud Connector eventually creates a secure HTTP tunnel for secure communication within these two environment, backend and the BTP side. Now to access this cloud connector, eventually we need to create one destination over there. Through destination, we can access SAP cloud connector. Now the BTP application to access this destination, they actually need two services called destination service and the other one is the connectivity service. Now the thing is like in the destination side, we generally put some basic authentication, which means user ID and password. Now, this user credentials is all about the backend user ID and backend uh, accessing password that you need to configure over here. And you definitely know this basic authentication is always weaker than a certificate based authentication, which is more powerful and more secure. To achieve this, you know, kind of a strict authentication mechanism, principal propagation comes into picture, which actually propagates this user credentials via this cloud connector to access the backend resources. So one more service actually need to bind to this uh, BDP application that is called XSUAA or User Authentication Authorization Service that is used to get a token once user logs into this uh, application. And that token called JSON Web Token or JOT needs to pass via this cloud connector and we need to create certain certificates and certain mapping and rule we need to set through which able to find the backend user details to log in directly. And we don't need to put a basic authentication setup in the destination level. We'll be using the principal propagation as an authentication mechanism. There are other different authentication type also, let's say SAML assertion, for example. So we'll be just switching over here. Now, do you think just switching over here will definitely start working? Of course not. This is one of the primary thing and we have to do a lot of different setup and configuration on the cloud connector side as well as we need to do certain uh, setup at the uh, backend SAP system. Once this all gets done correctly, then this particular user login credentials in a form of job token will move via this cloud connector to access the backend resources. This is all about the propagation of principle and that's what we're going to implement in this video. So let's get into the configuration part. By the way, I created one video in a detailed way to explain how SAP Cloud Connector setup can be done. So if you're interested, I'll give the video URL in the description box. You can check this out later. Side by side, the SAP backend system that I'm using is above 09, 1909 S4 HANA Foundation, which is actually a trial edition given by SAP and that runs on my Docker created the second video as you can see on the screen that also talks about how you can install SAP system is completely free provided if your hardware machine hardware supports that. 
So you can check this video also. Probably you'll find some interesting uh, aspects and you can practice with your own SAP system. So let's move on. So my backend SAP is up and running and I also have uh, spin up my uh, cloud connector. So I already uh, set up my initial password and uh, so for the first time you try with uh, connecting the cloud connector it comes with certain default password that is called manage which i change to some other password so let's log into that and i can see that i don't have any kind of a sub account configured because i have deleted everything um, so to start with let's click on the four and put fa sorry va when you, uh, and this is what um, I just selected as my region. Now for the sub account, I should go to my BTP trial account and I can copy the sub account from here and put it back. Now the login email and password would be my BTP mail ID and password. Information and location ID as such. I am removing my other details. And let's click on uh, and then let's click on this save so what will happen it will try to connect with the btp trial system and uh, it will be doing the connection done meantime let me open to uh, the connection is working fine and let's go to my btp click on the cloud connectors And this will also show uh, this will also show the details. Now what I need next, uh, I'll go back to the uh, configuration settings. If I go to, I'll see a couple of tabs. The first thing comes uh, over here called on -premise. So go to the on -premise. And it gives one warning that no trusted backends are configured and HTTP communications is not possible. Now the point is when you do a, a principal propagation, it's all about TLS connections and we have to have the HTTPS connections to ensure. Now in my previous episode or previous video, I spoke about how I used my self-signed certificate as to authenticate this one. To, to put into the allow list and I got a question that whether this is mandatory or not of course no need to create your own self-signed certificate because SAP will provide a self-signed certificate by default so you can use that one also so I'll be doing it today but for that certain other changes I have to also make but let's do it and see what's going on if you go to your backend system and run Estrust of course you would need certain uh, administrative privilege so the left one is called SSL server standard. If you double click on that, you will find something called self-signed. And uh, this is what the issue of certificate. If I double click on that, I'll find below the details. Okay. And I can download this certificate. Okay. I can click on this export certificate and I can store it somewhere in Let's you can put as a backend uh, certificate for CRD. Yeah. So backend certificate, and if I click on save, and then I need to set it to base sixty four, and it's credit in the backend folder. So the same certificate I can uh, use now in my allow list or the cloud connector. So go there and click on plus icon go to browse and this one I can just accept click on save and now this um, message gone and we can see this all right now there is one catch the catch is that now my common name shows asterisk uh, dot dummy dot no domain I just make a note because this is the host name Directly my host name is not this one. Okay, so I have to change my host name. Uh, otherwise, I'll not be able to connect it. So what I'll do, uh, 
let's change the host name and that will be doing because I'm using the Windows operating system and there is a, a host file where I need to make this little change let's do that so I have to change my host file so let's open this one with uh, notepad and currently it's showing my local host uh, this IP equivalent to this host name which I need to change with a dummy dot no domain if I click on save it possible you need to open this notepad plus plus as an administrator mode so that's all so now if I just try accessing this one which is my cloud connector it will not be working anymore uh, you need to change it to the new uh, host name and voila it's now coming up and now if I click on login uh, I'm back to my old setup. So let's go back to the uh, cloud to on-premise and uh, you will see uh, the access control is empty uh, and my principal propagation tab is also there. That is by default comes as an empty because uh, Cloud Connected by default doesn't allow any entity to hook up with this and for that uh, to set up a trust configuration against the principal propagation, we have to click the sync button. But before that, I have to make certain access control setup. So let's do that. So first click on this plus icon and what connection I want to make and back in this above system for me. And I want to make an HTTPS connection. Now the internal host will become this one and port will be 5001. That is my port name if you don't know what port it supports you can go to SICF and from there also you can check let me show it quickly uh, so I can go to there are many other transactions also you can do that click on this go to uh, port information and you can see this supports this HTTPS connections with pipe triple not one for me so let's go there I put it go to next now this is the virtual host and uh, port so any external system or external client which needs to connect with my cloud connector which host and port it needs to connect to I can put something else let's say I can just put this one right? and the port name I can change to 5000 I can keep it 5001 itself doesn't matter click on next now I'm setting it up principal propagation okay because that is what I need so for the time being, uh, let's don't check this one. Let's see, go to next. And let's do the system certificate for logon. I want to set it up. I don't have a system certificate though as of now. So I can keep that uh, also space, go to next. Yes, I want to use the virtual host. Just now I've set it, set it up a few steps back. Go next, next. And finally, this shows how my virtually any external client to connect to my cloud connector they will link to but internally it will be represented by this click on finish and now it is connected so if I click on this uh, called action button check availability it shows now reachable okay all right and I can go to this button and if anything it's a link to it can show over here it says that client authentication information mandatory for principal propagation and we need to there is no system certificate which acts as a client certificate import a system certificate if client authentication is required so we have to go for this principal propagation so we have to do certain things for that so first of all go to principal propagation tab here by default it will be empty because cloud connector doesn't support any external entity to hook up with just like this so for that we have to click on this sync button and now the trust configuration using this sub account with the JSON web token it's now set it up so if I pass any JWT token from the BTP uh, then this cloud connector will be accepting this JWT token and it will be parsing the details out of so the next step would be go back to the configuration go to one prime and we have to create a system certificate because this system certificate will allow the uh, the certificate uh, connection with the cloud connector and backend during principal propagation so there are various different 
uh, options available you can create a csr means certificate signing request and you can use a valid ca or certificate authority to create a valid certificate and that you can upload over here but anyway i will use this option called create and use a self-signed certificate so if i click this button uh, this pop-up will open and i have to ensure that uh, this common name will be generally a host name but i can give something like uh, cloud connector and then country let's say de and organization let's say SAP. you can put as per your things and let's click on create it will take some time and then it will be uh, put it back over here and this will be my subject and issuer details that uh, will be auto populated once this creation is done and not only that to create a trust setup i have to now you know uh, you can see this subject and name issue have been given so what i can do um, this particular certificate i need to set it up a trust back to sap or backend system otherwise it will not work so you can download it and uh, go back to that folder so this one uh, is a dr file that we need to put it back to sap Mm, closing it so here is my check out this server you know ssl server standard click on certificate import go to the same folder but this time selecting sys.sys.cert click on open click on ok and now you can see in the below uh, the same thing that we have just added uh, by the way uh, by default it comes as a display mode so click on this change button and now you will see that add to certificate list button is enabled click on this this is important because that will add to this certificate list and click on save that way the icm will be notified and we don't need to specifically restart the icm for this case so now let's go back our cloud connector and this first part is done let me put back to the cloud to on-prem again and here let's reachable it's still a reachable but uh, it is saying now there is no connection check problem um, because we have added the system certificate but i have to use it over here for principle propagation so click on that currently i have put principle type as none i'll put it back as an 509 certificate and i'll use this system certificate for logon so these two things important click on save let's click on check again and click on this one still no issues found so everything is fine as of now let's go back to configuration again and if you scroll down a little below uh, you will find something called ca certificate so here in the same way uh, you can go for a csr and validate with us uh, you know uh, your ca certificate or but i'll be using my uh, simple single sign-on approach we can put ca certificate this is just to you know separate it out with system certificate name subject name uh, and click on create so it will give a ca certificate now by the way we don't need to create a trust configuration with the ca certificate because this certificate purpose is to generate a short lived certificate for that and now coming back to the principal propagation tab and i can see certain things are there and uh, first thing is there is a name property so what is my intention intention is that my email id has to carry along okay so if i go that if i set it up we have a couple of options or variable dynamic uh, properties you can think now we have mail and email both options are there so uh, i will try to do for mail for the time being and let's see what happens i'm doing a mistake over here because a couple of mistakes i'll do intentionally to understand how things are actually working and in your case when you will do this setup if you find this kind of a problem you know that what to look at okay that's the reason first i'm setting up mail not email and let's see what happens so that is a property that will be fetched from this dot token or json token so 
and let's see there is a sample certificate this certificate i have to put this the mail id right because i have put this mail right so let's put the mail generate can be company's email or something but uh, i'm just using ptp email let's generate and it will create one more certificate let's put it back to my folder uh, so this is the certificate that i have to now use to my backend but what to use it let's go back to our backend and i'll be using one more transaction port called sort rule if i go there uh, something i have already so let's remove it uh, save it so what i'll do i'll click on this button make sure you are in change mode and this is the one i'll just select click on rule and here the subject is there this is my username i have the email not mail okay i have the email over here and click on one this is fine now click on save and you see this developer and this email id setup is done this is done because you need to do this setup as well i did already so i just created i just modified my developer back in developer uh, with this uh, email id i have already set it up over here so that's why this is already mapped uh, but that means you have to do this setup uh, of course which i already did it so that's why it's coming so the next action would be that we need to have this uh, system certificate what we generated so this system certificate we need to allow as a basis parameter the subject and issuer okay as a reverse proxy so that configuration you have to do and uh, obviously again uh, you have to be a basis a consultant for that so our set 10 is the transaction code and uh, here i will be using this default because this is default is a global kind of a profile if I make a change, every other things, it will be automatically reflect, reflected. Get the latest version, which is activated. Click on the extend maintenance and click on change. Now, you can see that I, during my previous experiment, I already created this parameter called re trusted reverse proxy. And we given this value, which I used the last time. So if I, if possibly you may not have this uh, property or the other parameter, so you can click a parameter button and uh, sorry uh, i think you can click on this parameter button and you can add it over here so what i'll do i'll not add a new value i will click on this and click on parameter change and here i have to add the values and what the value currently i need to add i have cloud connector only so you can see over here on the ptp level cloud connector uh, remaining all are same this also to be cloud connector now here is one important thing and that is while you copy this one you possibly see there is no space given between this comma right so even it doesn't have a space make sure you put the space otherwise it will not work so, and before if you come to rz10 transaction one important thing i need i forgot to uh, talk about and for that, uh, what you have to do, you have to click on this uh, utilities, import profiles, and of active servers. So this is the first thing that you have to do. Uh, uh, and if you don't do that in your trial system above 1909, then you may uh, find up some problems to, to spin up your SAP system. So if you click on that, what will happen? It will try to do that. And now change back to the extended, click on change. So the latest version should be this one, change it. And now go back over here and click on parameters. And I have to put it back to connector. This one also to connector. And as I said, make the space available within between these commas. Now click on this copy button, okay? So change will be applied, go back. And now it is there, click again, a copy button. So the change profiles was applied. Now go back 
and click on save. Now it will say certain problems which I just noticed with the other profiles. I'm not, uh, I'm actually ignoring it. And it wants me to create an activate profile. The moment I click on yes, it will create a new version called 24. A couple of versions I created uh, for my experiment. And now I have to spin up my ICM for this to reflect. So go to SMIC, SMICM transaction code. And here, first of all, uh, go to this administration ICM hard shutdown and click on global. Obviously, if you are running on your productive environment, uh, you have to do this kind of a, in, a, uh, in, in a downtime kind of where users are not logged in. Otherwise, their connections will be broken. So for me, it is a, a trace system or trial system. I'm clicking on global and click on yes. Once I do that, go to go to and check the parameter display. And if I scroll down a little bit, I'll see this reflection not coming. This is important. Okay, trusted reverse proxy. And I'm using underscore zero. If you have something uh, already underscore zero, then you can create something called underscore one, kind of a numeric values you can change, you can put to keep it separated. No need to uh, change the existing one. You can create a fresh with underscore one. But I don't, I'm not creating it because I'll be using only the same thing for my dummy system. This couple of points are very important. So if you are doing it for the first time, this kind of things uh, is important. That's what I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm mentioning it or highlighting it. All right. So this is done, the first thing. And my system certificate. So let's uh, recap quickly. So this system certificate I have generated. So it, it is self-signed approach. I have put it back to my S trust. I created a CS certificate as a self-signed and I created a sample certificate that I marked with a sort rule for the mapping purpose and I added this mail, right? And uh, that pretty much about the configuration. And now we have tested. So I already deployed one application to BTP and this application I'm not explaining much. In the next episode, I'll, I'll you know, focus on that application. What is that all about? And if you're a BTP developer and it's a CAPM developer, for example, definitely you can uh, have an attention to that. So I'm going back to the, my, my SAP cloud system. So I have added this uh, mapping virtual to internal system, but I have not done one important thing and that is the resources that I need to consume. For the testing purpose, I want to uh, use one you know, uh, 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 ping service for that so go back to back in the SAP system and uh, let's go to SACF once again the service name is ping and I click on execute and currently this ping and these two pings I have made it activated it may happen for your system this is de deactivated click on that and you have to click on this activate service for me it is already activated so this two service I have just activated because both I'll be using from my test application. So this one I need to I need to expose it as a resource. So let's go back and click on plus and put this one. I'm just using path and subpath everything as a approach. So let's say this is done. All right. So now resources have uh, I have you know put it back in the cloud connector also. Now it is showing my resource is available. Fantastic. But to connect to the backend system, I'll be using a test application as I said. So let's open this test application. Uh, and obviously I have to create one destination service as well. So let me show you the destination before I go to this application. Because a lot of steps and uh, hence I'll just, uh, uh, this is the particular destination that I've created. The name should be SAP ABA backend because the application that I'm using is that one. So I'll give you the application details where from I have copied. I have not created this one. So that application I'll be using for my testing. I'll give the details, but I'll talk about this application in the next episode. So now if I make a, uh, if I just click on edit, you will see this is the on-premise as a proxy type because I'm using the backend system. So, and the authentication here is principal propagation, not a basic authentication. 
remaining all you know additional properties are important like dynamic one and uh, etc so this is the uh, additional properties that also you have to make sure and now if i make a connection what will happen will it work yeah so this backend connection is at least successful so this uh, destination is credit and this particular sap above backend destination i'll be using from my test application going to my space so one thing i have again calling out i put it as a mail not email okay so my both the services are stopped let's start it my backend server and the ui okay so i think my this two things are created application ui is ready if i click on ui it will try to log in at the first time so this is the credential will be used to make my backend resource accessed okay and because i am already logged in so it is using that session cookies and it is uh, auto logged in now click on this backend without authentication if i click on this let's see what happens it say unable to generate authorization token for user this on system this so what happened okay it is not able to generate the token if i click on this current user it shows pretty well if i click this get current user and approved including job token then it is giving my some access token so click on this copy this access token completely and let's copy and i can put it back over here and the right side is the details of the chart and you can see that my email id comes under email property okay not mail property so what i'll do go to cloud connector uh, go to configuration and on prem now here over here in the mail instead of mail i'll change it back to email and click on save so let's try once again to connect with the back end so this it's what happens voila server reach so that is the first thing you have to ensure because the, it will parse the json token all right and there the properties that i'm using is email not mail and that's why this principal propagation the dynamic value called mail was not able to map and that's why the token generation was failed right so that's the one of the thing that is important now let's go back and try to because this is a pretty easy kind of a thing but the backend with authentication is what the problem is because now the actual login will happen with an authentication approach so then it gives me the pop up to login as an authentication so let's put btp user id and password but if i click on enter hopefully it will be able to fix or able to access the service but unfortunately it doesn't something went wrong so let's figure out how to see where the problem remains for that we'll go back to our sap and uh, all right so back to icm and we'll be put our kind of a tracing to see what's going wrong and that is uh, for that you can go to trace level click on set and put this trace level as 3 and click on enter so now trace level set to 3 3 is the, uh, kind of a more verbose click on admins uh, go to again press file uh, reset everything so that way the next run when we'll make you'll get the actual trace data so click on save click on yes so the resetting is done and we'll again rerun the same operation so let's see uh it is failing that's fine that's what is happening 
but now we have a trace active and go to trace file and see display end or display and see something called auth because some authorization issues is happening you see port 01 unauthorized okay so the response is having some problem and let's see what the certificates are coming we can search with our user id uh, we can see that this certificate is forwarded and it accepts the trusted forwarded certificate so that means the certificate came all, all the way so this is the cs certificate as you can see so cs certificate is actually following the or forwarding uh, the the sample certificate containing the user ID details and that's been accepted as a trusted one so certificate wise it's fine but still I'm getting 401 unauthorized so let's understand how to get it but I'm not getting much detail from here what's actually went wrong so we'll tackle it something else so at least we know this is not a problem with the cloud connector site so what we'll do we'll now put some other technique to get that 401 problem why it is happening for that we'll run a program um, the program name is called secure trace analyzer or ECC trace analyzer we'll execute it and we'll put this log on trace 401 and uh, make sure we we'll reset everything first so that no trace file there before and uh, we'll just activate it and from the front end side what we'll do uh, we'll call the backend API process through API okay so this is what we'll call to see what's going wrong so because if I call that we'll see this 401 same problem but not a pop-up okay so each time I don't need to enter my user ID and credential so what we'll do we'll test with this one before that let's activate this one and the message showing that ICF reorder and test is activated and execute your scenario so my scenario is here i'll just call this backend with authentication and we'll get 401 good now we'll deactivate this trace and we'll show the data uh, not as user id but you can click on the session one and you can search for something a table called user ext id okay so if we search that we'll find some entry uh, because uh, you see what's going on it is telling that my CS certificate and the corresponding user ID is coming but this table called user ext ID for certificate mapping information that table it is looking up with this uh, CN details but it is not able to find it and that's why this domain name um, it is failing so there is no mapping happening means it is not able to find the exact backend user id to get into the system now to maintain this table let's copy this one and search in google okay we'll see some info interesting details that's a mapping x certificates in table user ext id what it says that maintaining this table is the manual process and we recommend to use the rule based mapping that means SART rule. So that SART rule, we have already used it. But still, that SART rule is not being considered. Why? Before we check that, let's understand what this table does and how it took, can be maintained. And for that, they are saying that if you want to do a mask configuration, we can run some program for that. Mask kind of a multiple users we have and create a multiple rule-based things. This is kind of a old pattern that we can use it. And for single user, this is a view that is maintainable. So copy it and go back to this uh, SM30 and click on maintain. So first we have to create an external ID type that should be DN. And now we have to maintain the value over here. You click on new entries and here we have to put the details okay so user is actually developer right i need to set it activate but here will be the cn is equal to and make sure we click on this activate button 
and now you click on save and what happened if I go to the table and execute it I will see my entry so that means technically I have added an entry over here though my rule based uh, certificate mapping I already have done that is not looked into that will definitely check it out why but at least this alternate option I have added which is not recommended so let's run again and see what's going on. That is our application. Click on refresh. Awesome. Now that mapping is successful and it is able to get it. Now the question is why our SART rule didn't work. So for that, before we check it out, let's delete these entries. Okay. So that you can delete from here. And you can save it. Um, where is the table if you refresh it yeah there is no more entry so again we'll see the same problem 401 let's try it once again yeah makes sense but why the rule based didn't work because we have already set it up let's go to the rule based part once again start rule and there we have already that mapping that it should be email and uh, all configurations we have already did but why it didn't con consider because one more basis parameter we need to set it up and that is called rule mapped uh, parameter which is over here certificate mapping rule based so that is the basis parameter which you can get it from rz11 no need to create an entry you will just search for login certificate mapping rule based if you display it you will see this entry all set to zero you have to make this value as one okay so let's click on this change value yeah it is a system wide put it one and click on save so now we are enabling it with the value as one and let's do one thing let's now go back and run it hopefully it will now work the start rule so that means from the front end we are able to access the back end system without any uh, basic authentication because i have shown you the destination site so this application how to get it how you can deploy it to so before you that if you want to try uh, setting up the configuration you can do it and shortly i'll publish a content where i'll explain more about this application where to get it from and how you can deploy it to ptp and you can test it Thanks for watching. Shortly connect with the next one.